Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So earlier today I posted a photo on Instagram of my version of last night's lunar eclipse. Now, I shot this with a pretty basic setup. I uh, got a lot of feedback today's, from today's post uh, asking me for some sort of tutorial or how I both shot and edited my photo. So I wanted to create a quick video here for you uh, and hopefully that next time a lunar eclipse happens, you have some tips that you can use for that. So the gear that I used, the camera was uh, what's actually recording right now, which is my Nikon D850 uh, DSLR, and I actually use this lens right here, which is my 70 to 200 f2.8. Now, it's not as long of a focal length as I would like for uh, for a moonshot like this. Um, hopefully, in the future, I'll have a telescope or something like that that I can get much more detailed shots. Um, but I did a lot of sharpening in post to help bring back some of the detail that's lost at a high ISO. So the settings I had were 200 millimeter, f2.8, 1250 ISO, and I think around a half a second or something like that as far as a shutter speed. Um, I actually stacked about 20 images together to help with noise reduction because I'm shooting at such a high ISO. Um, but we're not gonna go into that video today. That does take some more processing power, so if you don't have a computer that can handle stacking that many images. We can go through some of the, the, the sharpening and creative processes to still give you an awesome uh, moon image without having to stack. So let's just jump right in and I'll show you how to get this done. All right, so we've gotten all our shots, we've imported them. Now we're gonna jump right into Photoshop as this is where I do pretty much all of my editing. Um, some minor adjustments sometimes in Lightroom, but uh, for this sake, we're gonna be all in Photoshop. So we've got our photo in and we're ready to go. So first thing I always do is Command J to duplicate that first layer. Uh, so that means that we have a underlying layer that if we, if we mess up anything that we can go back to, um, as well as seeing a before and after, which I always like to do, make sure that I don't go overboard with my edits or anything like that. So. We have our duplicated layer, and the first thing that I want to do is separate the moon from the background and the stars. So what we're going to do is go up to select, subject, selects the moon perfectly, go over here to add a layer mask. Once we click on that, now we've separated the moon from the background. Uh, I can show you that. We've separated the two layers, which is great. So that means that the glow that we want to create here uh, to make it a really you know, dreamy, intense kind of photo, uh, we can do that on this layer here. So before we do that though, I do wanna sharpen up this image a little bit. Now, I typically use a program called Topaz Labs. I use their Denoise AI and Sharpen AI, but that's I think $400 for the whole bundle there. So for the sake of this, we're going to sharpen without using those tools. Everything that we're gonna do is gonna be in Photoshop so that you, uh, if you don't have those programs, you can do it yourself just using Photoshop. So now we're gonna go into Camera Raw to make these adjustments. So Command Shift A on a Mac. Now this automatically brings up the detail uh, box because that's where I was previously. Let's zoom in a little bit more. All right, so we have our moon nice and close. I'm actually gonna go over to the basic adjustments, see if we can bring out any details uh, before sharpening it um, within detail. So first things first, I wanna see play around with the, the highlights a little bit, see if we can bring back some of the details over here where it's brighter. We actually were able to, I'm gonna bring back the whites a little bit. Maybe also to 25. Bring down the blacks. Again, we're just trying to create as much contrast and detail in the moon as we can. So bring down the blacks. We're gonna crank the, sh the contrast a little bit. Uh, I might bring the shadows up just to see if we can get some of this detail back or the, that color and, and the, the 
brightness. So before and after, see we've brought some nice contrast in. It's obviously super night noisy. Like I said, this was shot at, apparently I messed up my uh, settings, f3.2.8 seconds at 1250 ISO. Just, I think I uh, accidentally nudged my uh, aperture to 3.2. I definitely meant to be shooting at 2.8. Uh, so, little mistake for you. All right, so we're gonna bring up the texture a little bit. We're gonna bring up the clarity. It's noisy. Again, this is where Topaz Labs comes into play. It can do some amazing things with reducing the noise, bringing up the sharpness, etc. But we're gonna see if we can push the boundaries of this to bring that detail out in the moon um, while not having it be too noisy. So brought up the clarity, brought up the texture. I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. As far as detail, again, still noisy. We're gonna bring that back in a little bit, but I think that's pretty good. So now we're gonna go over to the detail tab. I'm gonna just crank that noise reduction until I'm happy with it. So let's go to 50. So you can still see the noise reduction did a good job. There's still noise, but you know, I, I think it's okay. We're bringing some detail out. We're gonna actually sharpen this now, um, which might introduce some more noise. And so that's why we're not going overboard with the noise reduction just yet. So let's bring that up to 40 for now. So with radius and detail, we're gonna hold option or Alt if you're on a PC, I believe. I'm not sure, but uh, it's my best guess. So hold option click and drag the radius button. So again, this is gonna bring, introduce a lot of noise, uh, some haloing around the moon. We're gonna fix that later. Uh, but let's, let's go with 2.5. And really what I'm looking for is getting some of the details in the moon and the craters and whatnot uh, that we can see there. Same thing with the, the detail. Yeah, that's, that one right there is gonna mostly just introduce more noise. So I'm gonna leave it at, at 25. So you can see with the noise reduction, with the sharpening, still have some decent detail. Um, I might actually crank the noise reduction a little bit more. Let's leave it at 60. So now we can see the before and after of what we did right there. So we brought out some decent detail, uh, some contrast within the moon. We're gonna go back into basic and see if we wanna adjust the highlights just a tad. I think we want to, and then we're going to bring the whites back up just a little bit as well. Pretty big difference. I think that's looking pretty solid right now. So we're going to click OK and see how much contrast we brought into it. Uh, you can really see the craters, still get the color there. But now it is where we get to the creative part. So in layer two, and this is really subjective and this is playing around, what we're going to do is paint with the brush um, a lot, and we are going to use a bunch of different colors and different blend modes. So first and foremost, I'm going to just use the normal blend mode and make sure that B is selected. Uh, my brush is already orange, as you can see in the color picker up here. And we are going to just increase our brush size and so often I use, I think I've showed this in previous videos, control option, and then you drag. I usually use this uh, for my, for changing the size of my brushes. Uh, for the sake of these types of adjustments, I actually change my key bindings to W and E to increase and decrease the brush. Uh, and so the reason for that is, uh, as an example, here I can just, I hit click, and increase it. Now I am at 100% flow. I want to be at five or six. So I'm going to go back and we're just going to click, start clicking and increasing it as we go. And we are going to change the brush color. And this is really just where it gets creative until we kind of like the glow around the moon. So that's a little much. So I'm actually going to drag the opacity down. I like going overboard often with these types of glows or light bleeds or whatever, because with the opacity slider, I can always bring it back um, and let my eyes adjust to it a little bit or see what I've done, realize I went overboard. 
and then bring it back. I'm okay with that. Again, we can adjust that at another time. So now we have one layer of uh, this glow. I'm gonna create another layer and we're gonna actually switch up the blend mode. And so this is gonna be hard light. And we're gonna do the same thing. And I like that. Make this a little bit more orange. Hard light's often hard to figure out. Uh, what the color is going to end up being. So again, it's just it's just a matter of playing around with it. You can see how much more intense that color was, you know, how red it is. And actually what I'm going to do, you can hide these by clicking and dragging and it can hide multiple layers at a time. Now that we have just this one, I want to make this a little bit bigger. I do kind of like that. I like the red glow around. All right, so let's go with 50 for right now. Um, now I'm going to start sh kind of shaping the light. You can see how bright this is here. Uh, this is a whiter kind of light. Uh, this is going to be a little bit uh, brighter orange. So let's start playing around with that. We're going to go back to hard light. Uh, but here we're going to bring our brush into the lighter, less saturated orange. And here we're just going to start kind of painting that edge. If I like that, I do another layer. I don't want to just be destructive at all. So everything I'm doing is in layers so that I can go back and adjust it. You've seen me do some of the opacity sliders going back and forth. Uh, that just allows it, allows you more control as you go through the edit. So now I have a purplish magenta, but bring it almost to perfect white. So I like that. I like this glow right now. Um, I think that's looking pretty cool. Now, obviously you see some crazy edges uh, here on the moon. That looks bad. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to cut off some of that edging, some of that haloing that occurred with sharpening the moon. So if we hold command and click on that, you can see those marching ants actually shows you the selection there. Uh, and you can see that it's on the outside of the, the moon, the, the issues that we're having there. So we're going to go over to select, modify, contract. I think it's close to two pixels that we will need to subtract the selection by. That was pretty close for the sake of this. Uh, video. We're just going to go with that. I'm also going to go over back to modify feather and keep it at one pixel radius. From there, we do command shift I, which inverts the selection. You can see the marching ant. So it's selecting everything but the moon. And so then if we go back into the mask, I like to do command H, which hides the selection, but it is still selected. We're going to bring our brush down, bring the flow up to 100, make sure that our brush is black. So you can see that before and after. So there you have it. So that is pretty much the way that I create uh, this glow. So. I think that looks pretty good. Hopefully you found this video helpful and you learned a couple of new techniques within Photoshop to make your editing better. Uh, if you did like this, please drop a like, a comment, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and we'll see you in the next one.